here they are and uh, again we will see a die roll deciding the uh, the initial game uh, what is the difference between our deck we can find though what's similar between their deck which is maining a lot a lot of end chops meaning that this die roll will not be as important as in the previous match. Exactly, especially because as we saw previously, Alessandro is main deck in more than 15 hand traps, while on the other hand Pierluigi, considering that he's playing the Zodiac version, has access to the Zeus. So as we saw previously with Herman, if it happens that his opponent has the Abyss Dweller, for example, he can push with a throw blade and having the Zeus. So, yeah, also surprisingly something we have not seen all weekend yet uh, is the free copies of Phantasmai in Pierluigi's deck. Yeah. I really am curious to see whether that card will pay off. Uh, we haven't seen it at all and uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if I'm convinced about it. It's the only card I'm skeptic still. Yeah, I mean, this uh, Phantasmai was very popular in the Sky Striker meta game in which uh, the mirror match was very difficult. And it basically gives you one more access to basically get rid of your opponent monster. And now, hopefully, we will get to see the chance to, uh, of Phantasma being summoned by Pierluigi. It would be a very good addition to his deck, especially because we haven't seen Phantasma being summoned this weekend. Yeah. I mean, it was particularly good against those decks because you negate a card that targets. Uh, not so much here, but... Again, we'll see, maybe it will be better than we expect, and uh, I really wish that we will see it in action. So, let's see who will start things off. Uh, it could be Pierluigi, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, he does things by summoning a kit. Uh, okay, we'll just use it for Almirage, and let's see if the first hand drop of the game from Alessandro is coming down. No. No. I mean, I'm very curious to see if for the third time this weekend Pierluigi goes with the starter combo that has shown as Apollosa plus the Ancient Warrior and the Revolt. Yeah, he had the, every time the same opening all over again. And uh, yeah, uh, he, he didn't fear much opposition, but this time he grabs a kit, which is uh, definitely unusual when you already have uh, one engrave. Ooh, and he or okay. only sp wow. face down one card. Definitely not the start we were used to and I think Alessandro is super happy with this This is by far the weakest start we have had with a tribe brigade game and unfortunately uh, For Pierluigi it had to come in the top four And expect Pierluigi to have at least a couple of entraps in his hand because he basically passed And again, we see the difference between their decklist which is the Ancient Warrior card. He goes on by discarding the kit and trying to search for the one of Ancient Warrior in his deck. Let's see if uh, there is a response from uh, Pierluigi. I think he has something, yeah. He's considering it. Yeah, he's debating. Uh, uh, it's not that obvious, but uh, he's kind of forced to, to do something here. Let's see. The face down, uh, the revolt uh, is not scary at all. Uh. Uh, but it could be a Solemn Strike, yeah, could be. we must mention, which is uh, one of the cards uh, that Pierluigi is maining. Yeah, could be an Impermanence as well. Uh, he's playing a lot of traps as well. So, yeah, it resolves, uh, so he will grab uh, the only copy he has of the uh, Ingenious Kong. So, he can special summon it now. Yeah. So he does, uh, no surprise, we've seen this. Uh, Usually we saw this uh, for an Abyss Dweller, uh, which going second uh, shouldn't be great, but in this case it would be. Yeah. So especially because Pierluigi didn't start very strong, but uh, I think if I were Alessandro, would you try to force Pierluigi to activate the set card right before passing uh, for Abyss Dweller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree, and uh, <clears throat> it seems like uh, Alessandro. He's really in a comfortable spot. Uh, to be fair, he doesn't necessarily know that Pierluigi might have a Solemn Strike set. So if he commits to a big link summon, maybe the Solemn Strike will punish him. Yeah. He's considering it. Mm. Yeah, maybe he's even just uh, going for the Dweller. And uh, by the way, he also has the option of going for Tornado. Yeah. If he feels like he just wants to OTK, he has Tornado Dragon to pop the back row. 
and uh, and then uh, a swing for game. So uh, definitely a lot of options. And for now, uh, the Ancient Warriors package uh, showing off strong. So yeah, we can see that he's very think he's thinking very hard on this. But uh, yeah. maybe we will see a dweller. I don't know. Let's see. A dweller is safer. Yeah. Tornado Dragon is. Uh, yeah, on the crazier side, if he thinks like he cannot TK. And Ooh. I think it is the Tornado. Okay. okay, so very brave move by Alessandro. He goes for the Tornado Dragon. He doesn't start. He really wants to take this home. And uh, he's not afraid to commit to do so. Basically, here, uh, maybe he feels he has a chance to seal the game. Yeah. Because otherwise, uh, you will go for Dweller. Oh. And the strike uh, is there, so... It didn't matter that much, but uh, well played by Alessandro. He forces out the Solemn Strike by Pierluigi, and he's now free to continue his combos however he feels. And there is a Diddy Crow being discarded for the Keras. Interesting uh, uh, cards here. And uh, now it's all on Pierluigi. Does he have one of his hand traps in his hand? He's playing three copies of Baylor, which would be great here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about Vader or Ash because he was very thinking uh, before Alessandro normal summon the Ancient Warrior. Uh, so maybe he has he has it, especially because he passed like with the with three cards in hand and the the kit. Yeah, the end was uh, very slow by yeah. Pierluigi, and uh, yeah, we can expect uh, a lot of end shops uh, or maybe a Ferro Blade as well. Uh, so. We'll see if that's the case uh, from Pierluigi. Uh, Alessandro here debating uh, whether he wants to just punish Chu. I think uh, he does. Yeah. So we can see a response from Pierluigi in the form of Veiler, maybe. It looks like yeah, he might maybe. have it. Yeah. And he does. So effects Veiler comes down from Pierluigi who really wants to stay in this game and not give it up. And I think he managed to successfully stop Alessandro. Uh, he's looking like he wants to just enter battle phase and attack over Almirage, and he does. So, interesting game. Uh, Pierluigi with a very slow start, but thanks to Strike and uh, Valer, he seems like he's still in this and wants to stay in this top four match as long as possible. But two face downs from Alessandro, so interesting, interesting stuff. We definitely can expect a revolt. Uh, he is not playing strike, but he has uh, impermanence. So I would expect for sure a uh, revolt set. And the kit we yeah. knew about uh, is normal summoned. What do you do if you are Alessandro? Do you flip the revolt immediately or do you wait? I think I would wait, yeah. You just wait and uh, maybe they pair. Okay, so fair enough. Back and forth uh, mirror match. Uh, doesn't seem like uh, any of them is gonna give his opponent uh, an easy time to get to the finals uh, and not a surprise at all. So Impermanent stops the kit, uh, which can be used now to get to a Keras maybe. But uh, Pierluigi was lacking some uh, combo pieces in the, in the last uh, turn. Yeah. And now if Alessandro has the revolt, uh, Pierluigi might be in trouble. Yeah, let's see. Uh, he needs to to push something. He has three cars and I think he just passed. Uh, wow. No revolt coming down from Alessandro. Uh, surprising. So maybe it's another copy of Impermanence. And he now will start off with the Keras. So uh, very, very interesting start by both. Uh, uh, Pierre Luigi seems like he's in big, big trouble at the moment. But uh, Alessandro, again, uh, this time has the life points uh, advantage. He can try and uh, close the game this turn if he can. I think Pierre Luigi maybe has another Veiler because uh, if he had impermanence, he would have said it. Maybe he has another Veiler because uh, he passed once again. Oh, yes, Ash. Okay. Yeah. So Ash. Uh, I think it's uh, correct to yeah. just wait. Uh, yeah. uh, his opponent already had the plenty of uh, monsters in grave, so only two cards in Pierre Luigi end. Uh, we don't know any of them, uh, but yeah, it seems like Alessandro just is in uh, way too much of a lead. He will now get the omen, denying the 
uh, the kit from uh, netting a plus one uh, to Pierluigi. I agree with this. And uh, it also allows him uh, to Ooh, get mad by a Fantasmi. Okay. okay. As we mentioned, uh, this is one of the cards in Pierluigi's deck. Uh, honestly, doesn't look that impressive right now. Yeah. But at least uh, he can help him out uh, to uh, survive uh, this turn. So. Yeah, it was there to save him uh, just to prevent Alessandro from uh, sealing the game. Maybe he will manage somehow to do it uh, if Pierluigi doesn't draw a Veiler or something else, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, so he shuffles something back. Uh, seems like he's debating uh, uh, quite a bit uh, on the on the card. Uh, never a good sign, especially for players uh, like uh, these two. Yeah who didn't really show any sign of hesitation in the previous matches. But already we have uh, 20 minutes, uh, uh, almost 10 minutes gone uh, in our clock, uh, which means we are back to a regular uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! game of 40 minutes. Plenty, plenty of time for these duelists. And yeah, without any surprise, the kit uh, is gone. Uh, do you think uh, Alessandro will play it safe or will just try and push for game here? I think he has a chance, and uh, maybe he doesn't want to miss it. He needs to be careful because Pierluigi drew two fresh cards with Phantasmi, so maybe he could have drawn a effect Veiler. Could be possible, but uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I think he's doing some calculation here. If he has the chance, maybe he doesn't want to miss it. Yeah, and it seems like Alessandro is not... Uh buying the bluff uh, from Pierluigi and he will just continue to combo off. So he does so using uh, both to uh, to get uh, probably the long bow could be. Yeah. Let's see. And then he gets to search pretty much any card from his deck. Uh, he's not playing the rescue cat, neither of them are, which is really interesting. Uh, out of our four uh, tri-brigade players in our top four, only one of them is playing cat. And yeah, the, the longbow hits the field, the omen will trigger, uh, giving him uh, pretty much any monsters from his main deck. Yeah, I think now Alessandro maybe he will give it a try. Yeah, if he, if he goes for this, I think he will try his best to OTK this turn. Uh, can't blame him, I think it makes sense, and if he follow it... Uh, uh, our streams, he knows that uh, Pierluigi does not main Nibiru. Yeah. So only Ash and Valer. Ash is gone. Yeah. So only Valer uh, could be in the end of Pierluigi. So, yeah, as expected, he special summons with Longbow. Uh, the kit, he can continue by banishing a few cards from the grave. Uh, he already used the Omen yeah. this turn. So, seems like, uh, yeah, he will banish three. Do you think he goes for the Eagle Bird to just push a lot and then access code, I guess? Yeah, I think. Oh, but the Veiler is there, okay. <laughs> Good try by Alessandro uh, to OTK, but another Veiler is picked up by Pierluigi. Is that called by the Grave, maybe? Face Down is thinking about yeah. it. I think it's a spell. Is he reading it? No. No, no, I think. I oh, know it's the drop. Oh, Ooh, wow. very interesting play here. By Alessandro, nicely done. He uses the Forbidden Droplet, tributing his kit, and this way it can resolve. Very, very nice play. And if you look at Pierluigi life points, you should notice something. 5300 is exactly the attack of an access code when it resolves. Yeah. So, what a play from Alessandro. Usually, you use the Droplet to negate your opponent. Uh, uh, cards. Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, you used it offensively as a pseudo call by the grave. Uh, what a play! Well played. Yeah, really liked it. Not expected. <laughs> no, no, it looked like a spell. We yeah. thought it could be, uh, as we mentioned, call by, but it was uh, the forbidden and uh, very, very well played here. And now, as we mentioned, uh, this is just perfect. Axkes code it's the field and this is just exactly game if it resolves because it's 53 so 
great, uh, great play by Alessandro. Let's see. Yeah, they're just yeah. Uh, shortly debating. Uh, All good. Yeah, all good. So we're gonna see one time again Axis Code Talker being the card that could lead one of these players a step closer to the finals. But it's all thanks to this amazing Forbidden Droplet trick by Alessandro. What a play to have the lucidity even of just keeping everything calm and playing this well in the top four of such a stage. Yeah. So and yeah, Fantasma is gone, he enters the battle phase, attacks, and uh, let's see. There is an impermanence uh, huh. on the access code. Here is the crucial differences between cards that gain attack by themselves and give uh, other, uh, uh, you know, an increase because uh, they would not lose the additional attack. Interesting that he kept the impermanence with the Phantasmi face up. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And uh, what a show here! We thought that the game was over, but I actually could tell by Pierluigi's face that he was calmer than expected. And if he gets it, and he does get a, an insane top deck here, this game, ooh, back off by the grave! Uh, wow, what a mess! And. Uh, Called by the grave uh, actually shakes the the duel, which now needs to top deck any monster to close this up. Okay. He does. It's tanky, and uh, this means that game one, after an incredible back and forth duel, goes to Alessandro. What a way to start uh, this top four match! Uh, doesn't get much oh, better than yeah. this. I mean, we saw Pierluigi going first, and he didn't have that much going on, but. Uh... Very well played by Alessandro with the Forbidden Droplet. Absolutely. What a play, what a play by both. Uh, absolutely showing uh, an incredible knowledge of their position. And uh, in the end, uh, Alessandro, I would say, deservingly takes uh, game one. And now, looking at the side decks, uh, it's Pierluigi who will go first. Yeah. And uh, what do you think he can bring in? I'm thinking about Sherry Dried. A card we, we haven't seen so far this weekend, but uh, I've seen a lot of players debating about this card because sometimes it can be very good, sometimes very bad. Yeah. So it's very 50 50. We have Schoolmaster, so another hand that can be added to his deck, but uh, for the rest, I think uh, it will not be. Yeah, as we saw in game one, uh, he has a main deck with uh, Solemn Strikes yeah. uh, and plenty of traps which are really useful. So. Uh... It would surprise me if we would side uh, that many cards. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, Alessandro is uh, quite prepared for going second, as we have already seen. Yeah, I mean, he has the Pranker tops, he has other copies of Forbidden Drop, which will be good. And uh, yeah. also the Gamma will be curious, but... Uh, yeah, the Gamma still not, not really good, yeah. in this matchup, I would say. But uh, yeah, he does have uh, a few interesting side deck choices. Uh, uh, I don't know, I think... Uh, is uh, in a way more prepared in the main deck because we said he has 15 entrops but in the side deck i do like uh, pierluigi side deck uh, a little more so let's not forget that uh, in game three whether we will see it and alessandro goes first dweller is a possibility yeah. and uh, i don't think pierluigi has that many outs uh, if that happens yeah yeah i think only impermanence Maybe yeah. the only one. Yeah. It's uh, it's probably best if he can uh, stop it from happening before. Uh, uh, he has many virus, but uh, let's see. Uh, for now, the pressure is definitely on Pierluigi. For the first time uh, uh, in this weekend, 1-0, uh, uh, one down. Uh, he was uh, winning every game 2-0. And, oh, and now, uh, for the first time, struggling. So we'll see if he can uh, fight back or if it will be another 2-0 for today. <laughs> that will be for sure a first if uh, every match ends up uh, in a Chuo victory. Very curious to see here now if Pierluigi can actually do something better than his uh, first turn before, where he just passed with the Al Mirage and uh, yeah. a back row. 
Yeah, I mean, these are always uh, tricky moments. Uh, I was about to ask you, how does it feel, you know, to be in the top four, uh, only one game away from the finals? Uh, unfortunately, you never <laughs> experienced it, so never mind. I can ask you myself later. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, it seems like they're, uh, they're ready. Let's see if Pierluigi can uh, show us one of his openings he did earlier. The one last game cannot be sufficient to uh, grant him a spot in the final. And uh, it is already much better. So Desire is always the best card to start things off. Uh, but the Ash could come down from Alessandro. He's thinking about it. But yeah, it doesn't activate it. So a uh, sigh of relief from uh, Pierluigi who can pick up two fresh new cards. Uh, gonna just check uh, some of his banished one, uh, and uh, I like that differently from other players, uh, he is using uh, uh, three copies of Revolt, uh, just because of the desires. Okay, and he starts uh, things off uh, with uh, Fractal, so uh, standard, standard opening. We could see a Schoolmeister from uh, Alessandro, maybe. Let's see if uh, uh, this will resolve. I think this is another difference that uh, most of our players this weekend, uh, some of them played Desire, some others didn't play. And we do see the Shared Ride, oh, so okay. he sided those in. Yeah, yeah. Not sure if he picked up a copy, but let's see. So I think he's thinking a lot. Uh, I hope it is not due to the fact that the Desires <laughs> were uh, devastating, but let's see. I do see the Nerval, so it shouldn't be that bad. But yeah, I think he's looking... Yeah. Uh, and he banished a lot of monsters. Yeah, Nerval resolves uh, and he gets the kit. So at least uh, a uh, set uh, is safe. And now he gets normal summoned, banishing two. So is there a response from Alessandro? Finally looking at his hand and there is an impermanence. So once again, Pierluigi must find a way to deal with the situation. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of monsters. Yeah. I think he banished uh, seven uh, or six or seven tribe brigades. Uh, never happy to see that. Yeah. Almirage, once again, just like game one, and Kit uh, can be activated to send uh, one, which doesn't do much at the moment. Yeah, if he lost most of his monsters, uh, he's in trouble. Yeah. So it sends an airball, unfortunately, already used it. And uh, let's see if he now has another extender like the Keras. He does not. Uh, wow. Just like in game one, uh, has to rely only on the Armirage, but at least he has uh, three face down cards. So, very good sign. Let's see if Alessandro will have a prompt response. He starts things off by using Tanky. Always seems super confident, Alessandro. Yeah. And the share ride is activated. Okay. So great, great response here by Pierluigi. I think uh, Alessandro will uh, be quite unhappy about that. As you mentioned, it can grant you... I think on tanky it's probably the best yeah, feeling. Best one. Yeah. Uh, usually it can grant you one to two draws, but if you use it on tanky, you know that at least two and probably three... Uh, so it uh, kind of reminds us of a weaker Maxi, so... Yeah. Uh, this is the best one now, because uh, Alessandro here really needs to think hard, because otherwise it would let Pierluigi draw... Yeah. ...some cards. Yeah. So now uh, I think Alessandro got the Ancient Warrior. Yeah, so he got the answer warrior to his end. Uh, um, let's see if uh, that's all he will try to do. Uh, maybe it just doesn't feel like he can play through the shared ride. So but now it's difficult because if you continue, then you risk to give your opponent like at least other two cars. Yeah, and again, a slow start in terms of masters from Pierluigi, but quite a solid one in terms of uh, other. Uh, Utility cards. Wow! And uh, Alessandro goes for the for the play, so yeah. he will give uh, his opponent another draw when uh, he sends the Nerval. 
Looks like he's not impressed with the shirt right, but yeah. Okay, interesting. Alessandro stops it. So he doesn't, uh, Pierluigi stops it. So he doesn't think like he needs the additional draw. He goes right away for the Ash. So I guess Alessandro that way got rewarded by going for the play. And uh, he will probably now summon the Ancient Warrior. Yeah, so definitely, yeah. Let's see if that's the case, the Sumu. Yeah, so he discards one, and uh, maybe will be met by a strike or a uh, impairment. Let's see. Yeah, because we will uh, see also Abyss Dweller being played, but uh, I mean, Pierluigi, I believe he has at least Veleron in permanence. Yeah, probably least, even the Revolt, as we mentioned, yeah. he plays three copies of Revolt, uh, so I would be quite surprised if he didn't have at least one. Instead. We see Al Mirage. No, just getting attacked. Oh, okay. Okay. So just an attack over the Al Mirage uh, seems uh, enough uh, for uh, Pierluigi right now. And probably Memphis too. Uh, he could uh, he could try to activate the uh, the Sun move, but. Uh, the problem is that that card will give his opponent a draw. Yeah. And now Pierluigi has to think about it, because otherwise uh, Alessandro would summon the Dweller. If he has maybe a strike on Impermanence, he has... He can wait for sure, so he can draw another card. Yeah, it's uh, it's plenty of draws. Yeah. I think uh, this Shared Ride is really being the MVP here. Uh, he knows he's safe from uh, from dying, and uh, yeah, he's already drawing a card uh, from the uh, Sun Mu, and uh, he would draw a card from the Nerval as well. So, so many draws uh, from Pierluigi. But he doesn't activate, uh, let's see, I'm not quite sure if he activated the kit. Yeah, he did. So, yeah. so the Nerval will go to the grave. Uh, I'm not sure if he can really afford to give his opponent that many cards, especially since he's not OTKing. Yeah. Yeah, because if Pierluigi has a revolt, then he's risking it. Yes, he does. Uh, wow. So many cards drawn for this shared ride. Uh, you can see Pierluigi being super happy with this. Wow. Look at this shared ride putting in a lot, a lot of work. Uh, one of the few players signing the card, but it really showing why uh, it's putting in uh, so much work here. And uh, a dweller is now a lot less scary. Like. Uh, he probably has an answer already yeah. in the form of uh, uh, yeah, strike or impermanence. But instead, we see a Link summon. So, the Ancien Warrior Link is now summoned by Alessandro. Okay, this has to do something different here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just trying his best. Uh, I'm not that convinced by this. Uh, it seems a little underwhelming uh, and... Uh, I think he might have passed he even. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we see the revolt uh, from Pierluigi, and uh, uh, let's see. Uh, is there gonna be a response uh, from Alessandro? Otherwise, uh, this is just uh, way, way too much. Uh, and although a risky part of desires in turn one from Pierluigi, which banished a lot of his monsters, uh, the shared ride is. Uh, Basically winning him uh, this game too. And I think now I mean, Pierluigi has such an advantage that... Uh, I don't know if maybe there will be something that Alessandro could do. Come back into the game, but uh, still survives. Yeah, he's gonna use the, the effect in chain, just getting rid of the tanky. But uh, trying uh, to stay alive. Uh, and then his monster is gonna get banished, uh, most likely, so... Is there a response from Pierluigi, or does he just think uh, he has enough? Uh, he might use the strike or the impermanence, he does, so... Okay. Impermanence comes down, uh, he will uh, make sure that the omen sticks, uh, and this now means a uh, lot, lot of trouble from Alessandro. Very likely to lose this game, and... Uh, uh, to have uh, the first game free of the day, but uh, let's see. So, yeah, so you're gonna cut the deck uh, one last time. Let's see 
now the, the draw picked up uh, by Pierluigi. I mean, he has so many cards that uh, it will be difficult for him not to... Yeah, he has uh, six cards at the moment, so it's uh, absolutely a fresh new end thanks to Shared Ride. And his opponent has no cards on the field, completely uh, protection. Uh, he doesn't have much. Uh, he has to rely on some hand shops maybe, but this is tough uh, if you are uh, Alessandro. Yeah. Not looking good for him. Yeah, although Pierluigi banished uh, most of his monster with uh, the Pot of Desire, it was able anyways to just... Uh, <laughs> with the Shared Ride did the whole thing, basically. Yeah, and he starts things off by summoning the Keras. Normal summoning yeah. it, by the way. And yeah, still uh, holding uh, five cards in his hand. Uh, and uh, especially after siding, a card like Shared Ride gets so much yeah. better. Because you get all of your side deck uh, and traps uh, and real traps. So here, if he wants to play it super safe, he can just go for the access code, I guess. Uh, playing around Nibiru. And I think he just went for the Eagle Bird, maybe. Yeah. Let's see. He banishes free. Is there a response from Alessandro? Yeah, it's just calculating. Yeah. Because, I mean, 8,000 seem... Uh, yeah, he's not that amused. Uh, yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, he seems a little uh, <laughs> accepting his fate, uh, and uh, it's only fair that two uh, great players are gonna get uh, game free yeah. to get to the final. So uh, let's see if that's the case. Yeah, the eagle leads it. Uh, not even sure if he wants to use the effect, uh, but yeah, probably not. not. He just goes directly once again for the access code, uh, and uh, if that's gonna be enough. Uh, then we are gonna see a game free real soon. Let's see. I think Access Code has won these guys every single game yeah. today. Oh my god. We see. Yeah, we have seen enough. And so, for the first time today, we are going to see a game free. I guess uh, the statement is true that when you can't beat them, join them. And uh, all it took for a Tri Brigade to lose today was another Tri Brigade deck. No other was able to do this. And uh, now we finally get a game free. Uh, it is going to be Alessandro who starts things off. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks to his Unseen Warrior cards, uh, he's gonna try and open up an Abyss Dweller. What can you tell us more about this side deck for going first? For going first, I, th I think that we will see for sure the Solemn Judgment being cited in by Alessandro. I think it doesn't, doesn't have that many things. I mean, yeah, we saw yesterday that he cited in Anti-Spell Fragrance, so maybe this would be another addition, but for sure the Solemn Judgment. While on the other hand, uh, Pierluigi, he has uh, some other end traps like Schoolmaster and Nibiru, but uh, I mean, I think his deck is already good yeah so. maybe he will switch the shared rides yeah. uh, when you go second uh, for uh, Nibiru. Nibiru I think uh, that's a safe assumption uh, and uh, yeah the rest uh, the rest seems fine so it's interesting uh, though that uh, up until now we always saw uh, impressive op openings by the tri brigade deck with Abolusa Dweller uh, uh, and some traps uh, and for now in this top four we yet haven't seen a good opening by the deck so let's see if Alessandro will be the one who finally manages to play around their opponent hand traps. Uh, no matter what, uh, uh, congratulations to both. They both had incredible runs uh, and uh, one of them must uh, unfortunately lose out while the other one will be the first player to join the table of the finals. So. I think Pierluigi saw the stream yesterday just to take a look of the other decks and uh, maybe he knows that Alessandro, if he has the opportunity, will pass for Dweller. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, let's see. I'm sure these moments, again, you have a lot, a lot of emotions, but one of them is about to draw without knowing yet the last five cards of this tournament. Is it gonna be Pierluigi? Is it gonna be Alessandro? Don't leave and keep an eye on this match because it will be soon over and we will have our first finalist for the day. So.
Last moments. This is the moment of truth. Can Alessandro, just like any other time he went first this weekend, set up the Apollosa Dweller board? He does so by opening up with, again, the Ancient Warrior Sun Mu. He did this pretty much every time, so a great way to open up. And if he has uh, a kit, wow, wow, he does. So this is the opening. So if Pierluigi doesn't have any response, this is Apollosa plus Dweller. Yeah. So let's see. It doesn't seem like Pierluigi is reacting uh, at the moment. Maybe he will do on the kit. And he's definitely thinking. No. Okay. No. Wow. Wow. Uh, tough, tough start by Pierluigi. For now, allowing uh, his opponent to go for everything he, he has. Uh, maybe this means that there is an Ibiru. What do you think? Yeah, I think maybe he has the Ibiru because he uh, doesn't have any other response. And uh, if he does not, uh, maybe we will see the Apollos and the Dweller as uh, every other time Alessandro started with this end. Yeah, that would be great for him. I mean, he couldn't ask for more in this game. Yeah, I mean, uh, even Dweller alone uh, is uh, incredible in the mirror match. Uh, but he must uh, play around uh, the Zeus. Because uh, the Zodiac deck from Pierluigi, just like from Herman, uh, really showed us the strength of uh, playing Zeus in the deck. So maybe we could just see a Dweller here. But instead, wow! Alessandro completely switches gears. And he doesn't go for the Dweller, instead... Summoning the ancient warriors seems like he's thinking about it. Hmm. Not gonna see a yeah a response. Uh, this is interesting. Yeah, though. this is uh, absolutely a new. I'm very surprised by this. Yeah, it does. So, what a weird uh, change of events. Maybe we see the phantasmi, and we do. Yeah. So, phantasmi coming down from Pierluigi. He wants to ash it. Okay. Ash by Alessandro. Interesting choice. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, it's quite complicated to say if it's correct. Uh, I guess so in the sense that you just uh, trade a good card for a brick in your opponent's hand for next turn. So I can appreciate it. And he will just end with two cards. So once again... Not gonna show us uh, a great opening uh, from Tri Brigade, but gonna rely on uh, more of a slower start. Yeah, he basically changed his plan because uh, as we saw the other times, it ended up with Apollos and the Dweller. Would we'll be curious why he decided to to open up with uh, this different starting. Uh, I don't know. Now back to Pierluigi. Let's see if he has a Zodiac. Yeah, uh, yeah, the Zodiac is uh, is decent. Uh, of course, the Oath uh, is not uh, uh, there just watching the game, but uh, the fact to bounce back is uh, quite relevant. So the desire. Uh, ooh, and this uh, pays off. Yeah. Uh, the Ash by Alessandro could have been used on the desires. Unless he has a second copy, and uh, I don't think that's the case. So the decision to use it on the Phantasme could actually be quite punishing here. Yeah, because now Pierluigi has two fresh cards, and also when Alessandro will go for another Link monster, the Phantasme is here. So let's see what he banished. Maybe he was uh, more fortunate than before that he banished a lot of monsters from what we have seen. Yeah, and here uh, we can expect a revolt, maybe from Alessandro, but the off uh, is uh, already kind of annoying to deal with, so for sure though the, the desires is a yeah. huge start. Uh... Maybe as well, compared to before, <laughs> not only do we see a first game free for the day, but there are less than 12 minutes remaining. So there is a chance also that this game will eventually go into time. So yeah, definitely must keep an eye on the clock. But uh, for now, we're still far from it. And an impermanence on the off comes down. Mm. Uh, good decision. Already stopping one of uh, his opponent's uh, 
line of defense. And now we okay. see the barrage. Wow, what a start! Zodiac barrage, probably the best Zodiac car by far uh, in the deck. Uh, it will allow him to special summon either the Wrath Pier or the Theroblade and force out uh, the, the card uh, face down, the Revolt. And yeah. This is very nice because uh, now Alessandro is in trouble because he knows that the Zeus. And he activates it, I think. Uh, so he drew maybe the Wrath Pier. I'm not sure if he did, but I don't know. For a second, it looked like uh, he was activating the Terror Blade, actually. No, okay. He doesn't, so he just summons uh, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, Zodiacs on top. Yeah, Chaganine. And uh, finally, Borbo. Are you surprised at all by the order of just not going for Borbo directly here? Yeah, something that we usually see is just making the Borbo and not yeah. enter battlefield. At the same time, I really like it because what this does is that you force your opponent revolt, and if they have it, you then have your graveyard filled with monsters you can banish for your tribe brigade. Yeah. So, uh, smartly played by Pierluigi, and uh, this uh, again will be the key difference between their decks. So. A direct attack from the Zodiac Monsters. Uh, and Alessandro is met with a very important decision here. I don't think you can. Uh, no, do... no way. Because if can't the wait. attack goes through, then you are in big trouble. Because in Manifest 2, the Zeus will come down. And uh, here you have to activate the Revolt. Oh, yes, and it's instead the Unimpermanence. Okay. Uh, still really good enough, but now he probably can crash, I would say, to make his graveyard uh, just a uh, huge. Yeah. yeah, and he does. So, as expected, uh, he now crashes. So again, well played by Pierluigi in uh, uh, stacking up the XYZs first. And in main phase 2, he now summons Kit, which is a double threat because there are four monsters in grave. Yeah. So he can already summon uh, the Omen. Let's yeah. now see. Time uh, again is a very important thing to keep in mind. And uh, let's see if the last card is actually the revolt from Alessandro. Would you use it just right here and right now? Probably. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Would use it. Yeah. No response here, so he banishes four. And wow. I don't think Alessandro is responding. So we see the omen. Which will actually go and banish the last face down card or the Ancient Warriors. Not an easy choice here. This might be huge here because uh, doesn't seem like Alessandro has any sort of uh, answers. Yeah. I think he allowed it. Uh, yeah. Wow, what a weird uh, turnaround of events. Uh, uh, it seemed like Alessandro would have been able to have a huge start, but. Uh, just the perfect answers from Pierluigi. Let's see if he has anything to do. No, no response. And Pierluigi smells weakness and punishes the Link monsters instead of the face down. So now we will move on to a Link summon. It's a long bow, yeah. I believe. And the Omen and the Kit will both trigger. So, what an advantage! Uh, and uh, a very solid turn overall here by Pierluigi. A lot of cards for him and uh, Alessandro here, if he doesn't have a revolt, uh, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. So he's gonna resolve uh, the Omen and uh, he's also gonna resolve uh, the uh, other Tri Brigade. So he gets uh, two fresh cards and he will also use the Longbow uh, pretty much uh, right after the search to special summon uh, the last monster from his hand. So, solid, solid Yu-Gi-Oh here by Pierluigi. will now continue to uh, get uh, the bear, and uh, he has uh, a lot of options. He can go for the Apollosa plus Revolt, for example. I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. Okay. But he goes instead for the Ancien Warrior, so interesting uh, choice. Uh, he now continues uh, on his play. Going really, really calm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you rarely see, uh, especially in a top four uh, in game three, 
a player going that fast. Yeah, maybe here it was just considering if doing something else, but maybe we'll see the own... Oh, okay, you know. Okay, it goes with the other one. Okay. Yeah, so he now draws a card. He will shuffle first and then draws one and uh, put one back. Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. So, draws one card. Again, looking really, really good. He has uh, in already threatening board and a full end. So, yeah. uh, a very slow start by Pierluigi in game one, but it seems like uh, the momentum is... Uh, uh, quickly switching uh, to his side uh, he in this game free so he sets one and pass so not caring about the back row is a strong read that the back row is a weak card and we will see if he's uh, punished or rewarded by this decision yeah because now Pierluigi knows that uh, Alessandro doesn't have a revolt uh, here was foolish foolish burial okay a card uh, we have uh, I don't think seen at all uh, this weekend but is yet another starter uh, from the deck. So, um, probably not enough to guarantee a board change. And Pierluigi is actually thinking about it. Yes. I doubt that he has the yeah, yeah he has the ash blossom. Uh, wow! Uh, again, uh, really, really stopping and trying to stop his opponent uh, on his tracks. Uh, can Alessandro find a way to fight back? Uh, he does by normal summoning uh, kit. Okay, okay. decent uh, response. Uh, but now I don't think Pierluigi is gonna allow it. He starts things off by actually activating his link to bring back uh, <clears throat> the Nerval. Yeah. And he will then use the Nerval. Yeah, uh, really nice uh, execution here. He brings the kit back to the end, and now the pressure is all on Alessandro. Uh, Nerval uh, grants Pierluigi another draw from his deck, and uh, if he really has the revolt face down, uh, this is uh, absolutely tough uh, yeah. for Alessandro. Let's see. We know one card, uh, which is the kit in his hand. He's looking at his graveyard, trying to figure out uh, if there is a way to stay in this match uh, and not uh, grant uh, Pierluigi the final, but he ends his turn, uh, Pierluigi flips the revolt, uh, and it's all over. Pierluigi, after being one game down, uh, takes the match by a storm uh, and wins 2-1, and one, uh, advancing to the finals. What a match. Let's go back to us for the post-match discussion.